Okay, so I understand that uh, Mr. Lukas, uh, in this way, suggested me opening this event. So, dear colleagues, dear friends, it, I'm very pleased to, to see that you joined one, the first out of the six online events. This is a new series of events that we are very pleased to do along with the uh, Warsaw Enterprise Institute and also Institute for Economic Research and Policy Consulting. This uh, project that we call Energy Without Borders, Ukraine and Poland Together to Europe, this is a project that we started with the support of OSF. This is the Foundation of Open Society, an international international foundation uh, recovery. And within the framework of this project, our goal is to help Ukraine in the process of uh, joining European Union. And we will be using the experience of Poland on working on European markets, on uh, joining and implementation of uh, EU key also including what Ukraine has already done within the framework of uh, agreement to join the EU and what we're planning to do. What differentiates our project from other projects is that we want to focus on separate sectors and the entrepreneurship experience. This is something that goes both for something that we're going to be discussing and inviting representatives from business and business associations and experts, and also our reports that we're going to be re preparing. Within the framework of this project, we're planning to have six discussions on six different sectors. This is first thing. If we're talking about six sectors, despite from the Aside from the energy that we're going to be talking about, we're going to be also talking about transport and logistics, agriculture, also uh, we're going to be uh, talking about pharmacy and um, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, construction, wood processing and so on. Today, everyone talks about agriculture when we talk, when they mention Ukraine and Poland. We specifically decided not to talk about it as the first thing, and we want to discuss it closer to the end of the project because really our interest to find and to talk about things that will uh, allow our movement further on to our European future but I'm completely sure that in agricultural area, we also have a lot of common ground. But let's focus on some areas that are not being discussed that much because they're also worth being discussed. And energy, this is also a topic that is very important, which you can have a proof of, of us having this panel today and all of our participants today. So... Before I give the floor to Mr. Lukas in order to moderate our panel discussion, excuse me, I was probably supposed to do that in the very beginning. This is a technical uh, point about interpretation. We have three languages in our today event. Since you've been listening to me for this three minutes, I hope you have already figured that out. But if that's not the case, or there is some issue with language for you, uh, Below in Zoom panel, on this panel, you have interpretation. It looks like a little globe icon. And there you can choose Polish, Ukrainian, or English in order to be listening to this event in the most convenient format for you. So I hope everything will be working. I am very grateful to all the participants and thank you, our uh, speakers and everyone who joined us today and listening to us. So let's have a interesting discussion. Lukas, I'm giving the floor to you. Thank you, Veronika, for you starting this today's event and you talked about our project. Uh, uh, my name is Lukas Wojtyha 
and I represent uh, independent um, institute for entrepreneurship that is uh, working in the areas of economic uh, freedom and personal freedom and also works with issues uh, as for Ukrainian accession to EU. This is a very important matter for Polish economy, for Polish entrepreneurs. We understand that there are some areas where we're gonna be competing with each other. And I think that these interests might be, uh, might be controversial and there are gonna be some areas where we're gonna be working together and have some fruitful cooperation. Nevertheless, Poland is full in for Ukraine to become a, a member of EU Union, uh, European Union. And this is a choice that was also supported by Poland. We will be happy for Ukraine to enter EU. Today, we're going to be talking about energy uh, sector. I'm going to be moderating our today's meeting and I would like to introduce uh, our participants of this meeting. And um, uh, pa Pavlo Stanchak, he is a rep representative in the EU. This is former deputy uh, CEO of LLC, has uh, TCO of Ukraine, and also a former uh, member of uh, Polish, um, uh, Polish company PG and NIG. I also would like to welcome um, Vlodzimir Sharenhal, who is uh, a representative from Union of Entrepreneurs and Employees Poland, and uh, Maciej Kubik, who is uh, project coordinator for European regulation within the Energy Forum Poland. And from Ukrainian side, I would like to welcome Mr. Maxim Sosoyev, who is a partner in uh, Denton's uh, Kiev office, Denton's Global Energy Group, and also Mr. Bogdan Sereb, Srebrenikov, who is Deputy Research Director in Dixie Group, and also, also Mr. Maxim Karpash and Volodymyr Melchenko, who is the Director of Energy Programs in Razumkov Center. So within the framework of our project, we were trying to collect all the experts that represent uh, energy uh, companies and uh, research centers and uh, also companies uh, that represent uh, entrepreneurs from this area. I would like to start our today's meeting from a short introduction of uh, separate areas. And I would like to give the floor to Mr. Volodymyr Ernhalt, who is going to talk about Polish system, energy system. And in our system, we use um, uh, coal as a main source of power, and we are reducing the amount of gas we're getting from Russia. And uh, there were some political also decisions made as for developing alternative sources of energy. So Volodymyr, where are we at and what are our perspectives? I am very pleased that I was invited today to to also be a speaker in this event and share my experience. And as Lukas mentioned, I am uh, the main expert in energy, and I'm also I also work with uh, renewable energy sources issues and uh, also. Uh, how uh, today, what does the Polish energy system looks like? The needs, it's approximately um, 185 kilowatts per hour. And we should say that this is uh, different from, from, the, from the capacities that we have and we're using 60 um, uh, you guess we have uh, 30, 35 we're going to have due to renewable sources of energy. But anyway, Poland is dependent on coal. We are developing energy on renewable sources of energy and the development happens quite uh, 
it's quite active and we had some amendments done to the legislation because previously, for example, it was forbidden to develop uh, uh, develop uh, wind energy, um, especially onshore. After some amendments done to the legislation, we got such an opportunity and we are moving towards this direction now to develop renewables. And why we do this? Because we have to do this and it is worth mentioning also our experience to Ukrainian side, because our problem quite soon, it's not going to be that much of a uh, requirement from EU, but uh, we can say that it's going to be an uh, urgent need that is caused by the situation itself. Because, for example, Poland does a lot of export of energy to EU markets. And we need to understand that just in a few years, just closest years, in EU, it's going to be hard to sell energy or products, I should say, that are not going to have any um, any energetic uh, footprint. This is all marketing. All the companies say about green energy, and this is a tendency, this is a trend. They want to have products. And now we see what products are really produced using green energy. There is a list of big uh, companies like Samsung, Mercedes, LG, and uh, they require this uh, green energy, and it should be timely, for example, until 2026. It depends on the area. Hence, we need to demonstrate that we are capable of of uh, of um, supplying this green energy at the volume they need, and the same waits for Ukraine. Very soon, right after Ukraine is accepted to EU. And second thing, even if you don't become an EU member and you want to sell your goods to uh, EU, that's something that is going to be required from you. This element of green energy, and this is. This is uh, interesting, but uh, you have a little bit a better situation in this case because uh, you have nuclear energy. We don't have this. We have uh, this, as we call it, black energy. It is something that is uh, done by the coal. And uh, nuclear is going to be seen as a green energy further on because there's no other solution. So you have those stations that are already amortized uh, and we will not have that for for some time because we're only starting to build nuclear power plants and we need to calculate all the numbers behind it you were building it during the socialism and now you just need to to make it modern to update it so from this point of view you are in a better situation than us we have we have uh, of course, uh, coal industry, you have nuclear industry more developed. And this is something that the Vershain said, us, we need to develop a program of um, stabilization for renewable energy. Because again, we don't have a choice. So our energy that is based on renewable sources of energy requires stabilization. This is our pain, so to say, our focal point. This is the biggest problem. But our cooperation, from this point of view, uh, must be very uh, deep because you have a big experience on using nuclear energy, and we need to use this experience. And we, in our turn, have experience in working with renewable energy sources. So I think this is something that we want to exchange. I think this is a very cool direction for our further discussions. I think that we will also have some other directions as for our corporations and uh, opportunities in it. I would invite Mr. Omelchak for him to tell us about the state of energy system in Ukraine and uh, where does it go? Where does the development go? Uh, please, Mr. Voldemort, the floor goes to you. Hello. I um, I welcome all the participants, and it's I'm very pleased to take uh, part in this interesting discussion with such distinguished experts and uh, specialists that know about Ukrainian energy system and Polish. I think that our connection between Ukraine and Poland in this area, this is a very important element element overall 
of um, broader Polish-Ukrainian policy, because energy, it's also an important element that influences our relationship. And you know that this relationship is long lasting and uh, fruitful and quite positive, positive enough as for me, as for Ukrainian energy. I would like to say briefly, what does it comprise of? So, of course, compared to Poland, we have more nuclear uh, energy developed, and it's approximately 55% in the balance. Then we have uh, we have um, uh, 25% for thermal generation, and 10% is uh, renewable and uh, hydro energy. So big hydro energy. And uh, Ukraine has a very positive, a nice mix, uh, even uh, energy mix, uh, meaning even if you compare it to some other countries of EU. So practically, we have more than 90% uh, in energy balance. It are the types of um, um, types of electric energy that has the minimum uh, emission, carbon emission, so it's 75%. And this is uh, not even something that the most developed countries can uh, show, even in, in EU. Beside that, I would like to say that for the last 30 years, Ukraine is a leader in decarbonization of energy, not only in Europe, but in the whole world. We decreased uh, the level of emissions during this time, more than 40% it went down. And this, as for me, this is a record indicator. And once again, it's not only connected to uh, trend, uh, to, um, uh, to a transition to green generation, but you also know that the economy structure during the Soviet Union was the following then when, um, uh, when uh, heavy industry was prevalent and uh, <clears throat> also military. So um, I'm talking about um, metallurgy as well. So those that have a lot of emissions. Then the share of this changed over time. And now we have agrarian sector, also service uh, services. This is also one of the reasons why Ukraine is the leader on decarbonization in Ukraine. And of course, the, the development of green generation, especially before war, before the full-scale invasion, was uh, developing very actively. The solar generation and wind uh, generation, wind energy, it had quite a good push and uh, good investments. Unfortunately, this full-scale war that was started by Russia stopped partially the development of this green generation, energy generation. But Ukraine, first of all, follows European tre trends and uh, stepped on this path on devel of developing of green energy. And this is the baseline and the the baseline of our energy system. And now we can see the renewable energy has went up for the last uh, 10 years within the structure of energy balance from one side. On the other side, the share of the uh, coal goes down as well in our energy generation. And um, until uh, 2035, it will even go lower um, approximately 30-40%. Right now, we cannot fully abandon the, the system of coal energy generation because it plays a big role in our system. And you probably all know what, what damage our energy system or destruction happened to the system during the war. And 
pretty much all the all the sites were attacked by drones and ballistic rockets, missiles. If we talk about thermal generation that got the most damage, you can imagine that 86% of all the capacities of thermal gen generation got damaged uh, by drones, uh, the Shahids. So if Ukraine had quite a profit of cap of capacities before 2022 full scale invasion. Now we can say it has well during some hours quite a deficit of uh, of um, uh, energy of electric energy. Some hours bring us profit as well. Now it's spring, it's good weather, so we stabilize the situation. And you know that we. Uh, we survived the autumn winter period, first of all, because Ukraine strengthened anti-air defense and also very hard work of our energy sector because uh, people in this uh, industry, they worked during the war and unfortunately many people died, many people were injured and they still continue to move on and they do everything possible for the energy system to work. We also need to say thank you to our to our partners, international partners, in particular Polish partners as well, that provided help with equipment and um, and funds. So it's only about gratitude, I can say. And I hope that this is the way it's going to continue. And also just a few minutes I have, I would like to point out the fact that Ukraine joined NSOE and um, now it's a full member and does import and export of electric energy. And this is also something that's very much useful for Ukraine. Also with Poland, we have quite a good exchange of electric energy, the trade. So during the profit hours, we provide Poland with electric energy and during deficit hours for us, Poland gives us to us. I think that this is a good uh, trade and a good cooperation and I think it's going to be developing even further only. At some point, it was there was a decision um, made about uh, NLG uh, terminals in Poland and those helped Poland to become more independent from Russian gas and now Poland is almost uh, almost um, um, independent from this. I also think that uh, uh, it's going to be possible to join the interconnector north-south and that's going to help with also some supplies to international market but for this Ukraine needs to liberalize um, some rules for the market. We are going there and we have the only path to join the EU. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for introducing us to the situation in Ukraine and energy system in Ukraine. This is very important. We know that the attacks from Russians on energy system, especially last winter, not this winter, but the 2022, it was very visible and even heard from Poland as well. Hence, I have a question to Mr. Jakubik um, about how exactly Polish energy system is uh, influenced by requirements of EU and some rules. Because we remember 20 years ago when Poland was on its way to join the EU, the requirements were different from their side if we compare it to today's. And also the technological revolution that happened during these 20 years, of course, brought some changes to European legislation in the area of energy systems. Hence, it brought some changes to the vision of energy transformation. Some believe that this uh, market of green energy has a lot of regulations, but maybe at least you can 
get us a better understanding in this case. I hope that everyone hears me, all right? So we need to say that this is probably an important matter, of course, and you said it just right, that a lot of things changed in this, in this sphere. And the European Union brought in a lot of changes for the last 20 years. As for their policy, and this area got much broader. And it's also worth mentioning that it is, uh, so to say, a key aspect as well, if we talk about the path to negotiation process and uh, joining EU and all the processes of joining, this process of joining EU, this is a process that is also requires uh, administrative, legal uh, side, and that requires a lot of effort from the administration of the country in question. Hence, you need to adopt a lot of changes to your legislation, a lot of requirements from EU. And this is, I think, the key issue or the key problem and this and this uh, these processes this development in this area of energy and it's not only about uh, electric energy and gas but this is also about climate and environment so it is important to have a very cool team that will be screening ukrainian legislation that will be monitoring the uh, adopting it to and uh, tailoring it to EU requirements and legislation, uh, then uh, provide a project for such changes and then implement the needed changes that are going to be uh, accepted by the parliament. And there are a few dozens of uh, some legal acts and uh, so on and so on. And then it's going to be about executive decisions and uh, addendums and uh, all the rest. This is a huge chunk of work that has to be done. And here we can say that we can share our experience, not only on this state level, but also on the level of regions and oblasts or provinces in Ukraine. Second thing, these issues, as for the energy policy that have changed during the last years, here I have an, I, I want to emphasize for Ukrainian colleagues that you need to remember it's not only limited to energy policies uh, of uh, EU. Hmm. European Union talks about energy climate position so this is something they also take into consideration the climate issues and the issues on sustainable development including environmental protection and this is a big emphasis in the last package uh, that was uh, adopted by uh, eu so it was a big emphasis a big stress went not only about the energy policy, but also about environmental protection, environment, and uh, also on emissions, hence the energy here of countries of EU has to do quite a lot for, for almost 30% decrease of emissions, carbon emissions, uh, hence including that Ukraine has uh, nuclear energy and those emissions are quite uh, smaller. I think that Ukrainian experience for Polish is also going to be very useful. At some point when we were joining EU, these requirements talking about energy, it was quite uh, smaller list but i would like you to answer the question how this uh, regulation 
impacts Polish policy? Where are those areas where we need to work more or maybe some where we did most of it? Well, if we are part of this market, we need to hold uh, to the principles of the market, the common market, and uh, some principles uh, connected to the market issues and exchange and government aid and um, also a competitor's market. And of course, environment. If we talk about energy issues in particular, including talking about uh, the generation of uh, electric energy, for example, that is uh, provided by coal, we have uh, shortened this energy to almost 30%. But we need to accelerate this path because decrease the to decrease the, elect the energy that is done, that is um, derived from the coal. So we have two issues. So it's some common principles of the market, some network uh, codes that are in place in EU that were that were mentioned in the second package, and also some issues that are connected to the functioning of the market, some processes on limitation, the access to the network. I think those are mostly technical issues that bring us to the situation where we just see there are common principles that are enacted in every EU country and uh, for all the players of energy markets. So all the players have to have the same rules of the game. Hence, when you are on that market, you can use uh, different uh, benefits that come within for trans-border trade of uh, electric energy. Another issue is about environment and uh, decreasing carbon emissions. Or reducing uh, the emissions or uh, using the renewable energy sources that, that allow us to decrease the emissions themselves. Now, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Stanchak about the experience, or rather, what from the experience of Polish entrepreneurs that at some point also went through this through this uh, process of um, joining EU that is going to be useful for our colleagues. I already heard that the energy mix in Ukraine is quite different if we compare it to Poland. But, for example, joining Polish, Ukrainian, so the process of uh, bringing Polish energy infrastructure to European countries or Ukrainian in this case, and can we use this experience? First of all, I would like to say thank you for the invitation and for the opportunity to talk about different issues and I'm pleased to share my experience which lays within for example in Poland um, I worked in the energy system before Poland joined EU but we were developing different projects some of them were done after Poland joined EU for uh, Ukraine Um, the gas pipeline operator is on the market for a few years already and something that could be useful for Ukraine um, for Ukraine as it was um, showed in the um, uh, as it was shown in a good example of gas pipe pipeline operator and to join and so e it's and so G, and this is something that would uh, would allow to start functioning earlier and become an equal member on European Union. But I would like to uh, concentrate on gas right now. I would like to share this opinion that in Ukraine. 
in Ukraine, a very big emphasis goes on biomethane. And uh, this is probably a chance that showed that this is very important for this distribution of energy sources. Uh, for example, in this conflict situation, as we observe right now, so not always the central uh, objects that work with uh, energy generation and they cover all the needs. So the distribution for different sources of energy that would allow us to go through hard times that could be caused by different factors, not only even war. That's why I think that biomass, and this is a very interesting topic, including Poland as well, I think that Poland could also use some solutions in this area. I know that Ukraine wants to be someone who is going to be a serious player in EU. That's why I believe that we need to we need to use the momentum that we have in Poland that hasn't been there before. I I mean where we have uh, broad gas network and we know that uh, gas is uh, supplied from from north to south and this uh, creates an opportunity uh, where we have some sort of say surplus gas pipelines maybe some that don't necessarily help Ukraine to connect to EU but this also can be done due to for example po Polish help um, hence we can use these opportunities what else could we need or what else could be used we can't we can't just cancel all the experience that we got at some point when we were entering EU. But first of all, when we talk about Ukraine, Ukraine has to win the war. And us, Poland, we have to help Ukraine in this. Hence, as soon as the opportunity arises, of course, we need to try to connect our systems. I can talk a lot about different topics and I even prepared some slides but I think I pretty much described all the key opportunities I think that now it's important to understand that some experience as a, as a consequence of what's happening in Ukraine I think could be used in Poland and has to be used in Poland in this bilateral contact when operator to operator they can share some needed information which, uh, well, we hope that it will never be used in the future, but it's nice to share this information. And I think that in this area, I think the nuclear power, this is the area where Poland can use the experience of Ukraine. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Maxim Karpash to the floor. So as in Poland, Ukrainian energy sector is quite consolid uh, consolidated. Before it was only done, the energy was produced by three main companies. So what has, uh, what does Ukrainian government have to do or Ukrainian companies in order to create competition on uh, energy level? So let's uh, let's talk about this from the uh, from the public uh, point of view. Of course, it's a problematic, but there must be a market like that. I'm very pleased to see Mr. Pavlo and other colleagues. We worked on different projects, uh, different situations, and your question is very interesting and very relevant. And now you know I'm a part of those that uh, believe that uh, the prices for energy must be must be dictated by market and in ukraine a lot of people talk about uh, ukrainian gas and they talk about they talk about oil and uh, everything else but we understand that once it comes from the subsoil it becomes a national product and we're members of 
EU in the future, and we have to work by the same rules that exist there. So my answer is very easy. We need to implement everything that is written there for the government, for the parliament, everything that is in the legislation, just start using it. We have an amazing framework, legislation framework. We just need to follow it. I don't know if I can, I can say a few words about our experience, uh, Mr. Lukas, Mr. Veronica. I even have a few slides on that. I may, right? Yes, please. Thank you. So I will talk today mostly about our experience with uh, communities, not on global level, but on this local level. I represent uh, Western Ukraine, and it's very nice for me to be listening to my Polish colleagues without even translation. Again, uh, due to my to my roots, to my family um, from Poland, I understand everything. So uh, people talk a lot about uh, energetic independence, and we talk about this, right? That's why we have this meeting. And, uh, you know, I like this uh, discussion between Ukraine and Poland and who has more experience. We can talk about our energy system and we call them green and nice and beautiful, independent, but in reality, it's it's about when when the uh, when the citizens and uh, companies and everyone on the market they are like this so if you take a look 10 years before it was low tariffs no understanding of where we need to go when we started talking about uh, about some energy efficient system we just got this you know the deer uh, the eyes of the deer before the headlights so and then we had to move to developing those plans. Now we call them sustainable energy action plan and uh, adaptation plan for our city, for other for other cities. I'm going to show as well. We were looking at the structure of uh, consuming in different cities and provided energy. Then we got to the question of renewable energy. By the way, it was done by uh, with support of Institute of uh, Economic. Uh, researches and we had a research in our area where we need to implement things where to put our efforts and we had uh, some recreational uh, regions for example there were a lot of talks about um, restricting uh, restricting um, small hydro not to ruin the system and we showed by our researches that there's no need for that and also i think everything else here you already heard about and uh, also following up with different projects that were supporting different um, initiatives on modernization and uh, the different institutions, uh, kindergarten schools and so on. We also teach starting from uh, from young students, kids and up to grown ups. And we have pilot researches and we show how big consumers, for example, what we uh, called public institution universities, they are big consumers of energy and how they can control it on their side. So, for example, we can see uh, the stations, photovoltaic station as well, and a lot of other interesting things that we've done within the framework of international project and monitoring of such programs. You see, for example, this fresh project, we just uh, finished uh, the um, development of municipal energy plans, nine of them, and it was for different com communities. It was in very interesting to see how different communities, they approach to this issue of energy energy problems. And uh, also along with Dixie group that are with us today as well, we had a project on replacing the, uh, the uh, lighting. And we also use the help uh, also for people uh, that are in the occupied territories, the armed forces, even Starlink. We managed to get connected. We have a cluster, um, Echo and Echo Energy cluster, that we we just call it this way. That is the driver of things and innovation in this area. And I would like to summarize my experience here. And also knowing Polish experience, we had a lot of projects with Polish colleagues, especially with uh, from Krakow University. 
Stanislava Stash, it's a uh, name by Stanislav Stash. And we see that scientific reasoning is not enough, not, uh, not all the times. So we need to explain in simple words to people what is actually happening. What can you do? How to change the sources of uh, energy? What? How can you improve? It's very important to do some demonstration, you know, because why those projects, even with market prices, they don't really go through in U in Ukraine. Why? Because there are no good examples. There are no pilots. There's no something that will be a proof for everyone. And of course, for this, we need money. And this is something that people in Ukraine call a political will, but it has to be happening. And also using mass media is a very important factor. We need to talk about this. Also building such ecosystem where you have people, technology and institutions that are capable of implementing such things. I think this is a good example because we can learn something from Poland. We can for sure take a lot of interesting and useful things about uh, the cooperation of institutions for the um, for the benefit of everyone, not only one company, and of course, international partnership. I think today's meeting has to be one of those chains or those, you know, those, uh, those um, uh, bridges that will ensure the cooperation of Ukrainian business and infrastructure with Polish in order to integrate. I think that Ukraine, obviously, after joining all the gas and uh, uh, electric uh, grids of uh, Europe, we have to be going together towards this and also uh, using and providing some experience with EU. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a similar question goes to uh, Mr. Matej Jakubik. What has, uh, what does the Ukrainian government and uh, entrepreneurs have to do in order to, in order to adapt to European requirements? to be capable of competition and to be a, an important element of European energy level and strengthen the position of Ukrainian consumer and decentralize Ukrainian energy system. This is very interesting what Mr. Professor was showing just a minute ago, because this is a very interesting system. This is a very interesting approach to cre create a new eco energy system that includes local uh, producers and also opinion of the consumers. You know, we went to this lower level and I'm very pleased that those processes already happen in Ukraine, that they are being implemented, that there are ideas, there are people that want to implement these initiatives, because this energy transformation that is happening in EU, it has to be happening in particular also on the local level. There has to be local initiatives. There must be people that will take on this, sometimes, you know, this, this burden even to implement all of this. But there also must be some legal solutions that will help those processes. There has to be this atmosphere, you know, on local level. There has to be some some uh, cooperation with local authorities for those projects to be actively and successfully implemented. And I believe that there also has to be financial support of such projects for those projects to be implemented. In Poland, such projects, we have already implemented quite a lot of similar projects and uh, including those changes that were done to uh, draft uh, bill a lot of those projects if we if we talk about photovoltaic uh, sources of energy or or solar during the last 5 years we increased the production up to 15 uh, gigawatt I mean, 
I mean, photovoltaic panels that are installed on roofs. So if we talk about uh, the cooperation on local level, then I believe that we can implement a lot of changes. Of course, there's some changes that must be done to the legislation, but from the other point of view, we also need to foresee additional additional uh, funding. Maybe on local level, it doesn't have to be very big. So for us, it's 4,000 zlotes, but it, it's not a big amount, but at least it's something, and people will feel this financial support as well. We also need to remember, where does it come from, this financial aid? It comes uh, from the money that the government gets uh, from the payments, if we talk about the, if we talk about the decrease in emissions of CO2, I know that Ukraine, when you become member of EU, you will also need to enter the system of trading uh, in regards to CO2, hence you will be, you will have to popularize some support programs. It's either additional financing of some measures and programs or some other means of decreasing CO2 emission. This is very good that there's an area of additional financing emerging from the side of different European institutions that work in the area of energy. In Poland, I know that Poland managed, well, maybe not quite perfectly, but with the issue of uh, energy infrastructure that uh, at some points can it's maybe a little bit too old but i know that uh, the need of using electric energy for different uh, sites uh, the additional uh, financing was happening uh, international by international partners and the state budget of poland while in poland energy um, is uh, formed um, uh, this low uh, this um, this um, grassroots energy has different rules and we need to understand that the small energy it's uh, not gonna replace the big one and maybe 40 50 years but not anytime soon for sure because by a powerful plant. It's not going to be enough if you compare it. So we need to have powerful, sustainable energy system, but such system, it's not a market kind of energy. So we need to understand that no matter what we're going to be doing on the energy level, there's always going to be, there's always going to be government. Even if we, uh, privatize all the energy people are still going to be accusing the state that the energy is too pricey and this is all the fault of the government and so on we understand that we remember when poland had problems we even had to uh, engage army to solve those uh, problems so poland has two energy so to say the private and professional sustainable energy as we call it so today the financing that is done uh, by the government and the EU when we're discussing energy system, the situation doesn't look as bad. And um, we see that uh, the intensive, the intensity is okay, transmission capacity is okay. So this energy is seen as an army. It has to be governmental, it has to be strong and has and has to be capable. So this national lines I see as an army. You know, you have to pay as much as 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 it requires, as the line wants. From the other point of view, we also uh, can remember uh, the line 110, the low voltage line that are in worse state and we need to modernize them. And this is quite a problematic area. But I think in Ukraine, it's gonna be the same. Uh, when you are going to be creating the consumer's line, a lot of companies, they they will want to have their own 
they will want to have their own power plants and uh, um, windmills. And I think that's where you're going to get some problems. And I think that in this, this is the area where problems will occur. In Poland, we have uh, different programs. But for example, uh, maybe uh, there is a program um, as for the commercial, uh, the commercial uh, operators. So for the local operators that own the uh, network of low voltage, they let in local business and local ad local administration. That's the way it works in Europe and Holland. This is uh, pretty much um, um, this energy cooperative and each citizen, instead of uh, giving the money to the bank or some local, they go to local uh, business that uh, produce uh, energy of low voltage. So if we, if we let this development happening, right? When we talk about we talk about um, uh, commercialization, we will feel the results and positive results of this opportunity. When operators they bring in their property, but they require transformators and so on. But the money they get on the local level from European funds and local authorities. There's this program in Europe, and I believe that we will also try to have the same thing in Poland. Uh, Poland requires a lot of money from European foundations in order to develop the renewable energy and um, also for distribution of energy. This money will be getting to us. And it's going to be easier to develop the existing uh, system. But we cannot talk about, about uh, the development of any network without the education aspect of it. Because uh, this is something that is connected to many conflicts on the local and higher levels. And I think in Ukraine, you will also have some issues with this. But for this, in order to solve this problem, EU allocates some funds. So what can be a problem in Poland? Uh, lobbying the interests, certain education, conflict of interest. In Ukraine, the same. We encounter these problems in Poland, and I think this is the same that Ukraine is going to encounter when they become member of EU, but EU allocates money for that. It's very good uh, that you have nuclear energy. And I know that 100 line was uh, going to Zheshev. Now we change it to 400. And I think that your line of high voltage is not bad. Uh, things that are getting destroyed right now, it's awful. But this high voltage line is very, very not bad. And we have a few lines of uh, 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 middle and uh, high voltage. And I think it's also important that uh, Ukraine also builds line, lines of low, medium voltage. And we, of course, will be happy to share our experience in exchange of your experience on using nuclear power. I know you have amazing experts in this, and we will be happy to hear everything you have to share about this because nuclear power is a very important element. This is a very serious area, and we will be happy to use the information you provide us. Thank you very much. I see that from the point of view of energy transformation, uh, some powerful groups are getting created, and I would like to address uh, Mr. Sergei Srebrenikov. Creating this uh, ecosystem and including certain values, and we talk about environment protection and energy safety. Hence, we know that energy has fundamental meaning for society. Hence, it becomes, hence, it's mentioned quite often during political discussions. So, 
whether Ukraine is ready to increase the market prices on energy, electric energy, is there any plan on how to transform the electric energy system, including the requirements from EU? Thank you, Mr. Maxim, Mr. Lukas. I'm very happy to be here today. I am sure that uh, exchange of our thoughts, experience, and lessons learned, this is not less important than exchange of goods and services between our countries. I will try to answer the question you ask me. Ukraine doesn't have any other choice, so to say. It's our choice to integrate uh, within the EU. Uh, that means go by the rules that exist in the EU. But those transformation that you mentioned and the price aspect uh, um, and the transformation of the energy, it's quite painful for us. You know, it's like a chronic acute pain where, you know, it hurts, but it's hard to really treat it. Uh, but I would also say Ukraine develops the national plan on energy and climate. This is one of the key fundamental documents that all the EU countries developed and also energy community. In June, we we plan to approve this document and I'm part of the working group. And this document has to answer the following questions. First of all, how does Ukraine see their energy system until 2030 and further on? And what uh, what ways we're going to be using to get there? What policies and steps? And also, I will use this platform in order to uh, consult with uh, European Polish colleagues about the challenges that Ukraine faces in the context of integration and transform transformation of electric energy with the uh, services that we need to also uh, meet. First of all, this is the integration of the market. Mr. Emelchenko said that Ukraine approximately 16 of March 2022 joined NCE in this emergency uh, Moat and more than two, more than uh, two years, our system has been working and it has been reviewed to the external trade of electric energy, and we uh, we implemented European rules on distribution of uh, the. Um, uh, transmission capacity on auctions, and we started trade through European platform JAO joint allocation mechanism and this is very good but this is not enough because market coupling this is uh, joining spot markets uh, with eu countries this is something that uh, ukraine really needs because being part of but first of all that means uh, better competition uh, higher competition, less opportunities of manipulating on the market and using some uh, uh, some non-integrity policies for such trade. And this is very important uh, for renewing and recovering our energy system as well in the future. What stands, wh what are the barriers? So it's also talking about different markets and we need to do this to switch to those markets and the, very soon before 2026 we need to be integrated i believe so but what is the barrier some financial issues talking about taxation but this has maybe regulated on the legislation level there's another list of problems that is connected to regulating the price in particular in ukraine our regulator they have to use price caps and we use them as a we pretty much use them as a as a safeguard uh, for the price uh, on the market for the consumers because our market is not that mature and uh, they also some uh, players on the market that bring some turbulence so to say to the market so that's why the regulator has to use those price caps. But first of all, it stops us from implementing market coupling. And we cannot do this. We need to remove the other one first. On the other side, 
it also limits the opportunities of imports uh, during the deficit hour, commercial imports of energy, and also price limitations. They don't really stimulate investments because for investments, it's hard to understand. If it's a regulatory decision, it's hard to foresee those and prognose anything. That's why we are this... Um, we are this uh, hostages of this uh, of this cycle. First, we we have to use price caps, but on the other side, we cannot really go further unless we remove them. So I think some good uh, some good safety measures for this market is integration with EU and uh, also something that will move us from the immediate intervention in the market to monitoring of the market. And for this, we need a strong independent regulator as we see it in the EU. We also have a problem with that because independent regulator, this is a very important figure in the market. And one of the cases, uh, quite interesting that uh, from one point of view, energy community created this position paper where they laid out all the problematic uh, that is uh, connected to problems and independency of our energy regulator and also on HR and making decisions, financial aspect. And in summer, we had this situation where regulator increased prices for water pipes for water. And in order to include inflation and also increase of prices for electric energy, for them to be able to pay for this, uh, and after public public uh, speech of top uh, people from Ukraine, they said that this is wrong and we cannot do this. And the regulator in four days, they canceled the, the, their decision and came back to status quo. By the way, I should say that uh, the water, uh, water ut utility is one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest, um, um, debtors also on the market and of course other investors and Polish investors they don't really want to go into market where you have debts right and this decision of the regulator this independence quote uh, to quote it doesn't really allow us to solve the problem so this is a challenge for us how to make the regulator really independent from the government and uh, not by intervening them that that much directly by but by uh, monitoring and some mechanism that have to be put in and also some things that have been uh, mentioned by polish uh, colleagues this is two aspects transformation of um, energy what the sh war has shown that um, a big scale energy, as uh, also my colleague mentioned, absolutely correct. But we saw in the case of uh, Ukraine that it has both pros and cons, because where we had rocket attacks on some big uh, capacities or networks, this is also something that paralyzed the energy system. So now we have to find a way how to use the benefits of uh, big uh, energy, right? Professional, you call it. And uh, the the small scale energy as well and the distribution of the generation this is one of the priorities and ukraine just recently in summer adopted uh, so, uh, that's new uh, legislation for integration of renewable within the market and the system and i would really want to hear about the experience of polish colleagues i was a few days ago i was in britain and i speak i spoke to representative from poland and he said that you also went through this uh, path but you had not a net metering system and then uh, it's it, it was mentioned that it's good mechanism until certain points and then when you get more and more solar panels on the roofs then you get problems problems of balancing financial problems and so on and so on so uh, poland also uh, went to net billing at some point and only now we start this and us as energy center, we uh, made an assessment, regular, regulatory input assessment as for the net billing. And we saw that there could be some uh, problems that can be connected to increase of tariffs for electric energy. So if self-consumption is gonna go 
bigger, this will, of course, increase the network tariff. So I'm interested to hear from the Polish experience. Have you seen the negative effects of this balance and uh, growth of uh, network um, tariffs uh, from this uh, net billing system? And the last thing I'm going to say, one of the priorities in this market is smart grid digitalization and we have a document that is called the concept of implementation of smart grid until 2025 this is from the government and it has a list of actions but the financial source of implementation there is a tariff on distribution and uh, also one case maybe you know in ukraine there's a big company DITAC. it's private energy holding at renat akhmetov's company and they developed for one province, only one, uh, Kyiv uh, province, how to have smart grid in one uh, region. And it was 2.4 billion euros. That was the calculated cost. That's only for one region. And I'm also interested to hear from uh, Polish colleagues, how did you do this? How did you transform it into smart grid and what comes within and how it impacts the price for the consumers and that can create problems and block this transition. So I outlined some directions of development of our energy, some issues, problematic parts, and I would really be happy for uh, the colleagues to share our their experience. Thank you. Well, thank you. And this is a very detailed um, areas. Now we are at this point talking more broader about our level, but thank you very much on uh, about bringing up the position of independent regulator. Of course, it has to be there within the energy area. That's why I have a question for Maxim Sasoyev. What are the main challenges and what are the main chances for Ukrainian energy sector that are connected to integration of Ukraine to EU, including in particular Polish experience. Ukraine has a transparent vision of system management. And I believe that here, one of the most important elements of this strategy has to be the creation of, uh, of a transparent regulatory environment because uh, uh, this will, of course, impact the funds, both Ukrainian and uh, European. And uh, how this independent regulator goes within the policy of Ukraine. I also would like uh, to share the experience in this area, and I would go, I would switch to Ukrainian. Now. So, my vision as for the regulator really is similar to the comments of my colleagues, and um, that. Uh, we need to work with the independency of the regulator. And we see that not always some decisions of the regulator can be really described as um, independent and there are some problems. But if we take a look uh, at this from the point of uh, legal uh, point of view, in order to get the regulator really independent, we need to change the constitution of Ukraine because as of today, unfortunately, it's not foreseen to have those bodies governmental bodies that are not part of executive uh, government. And there was a decision, a ruling of constitutional court. Uh, and we had to do certain changes. And now the regulator is within the system of ex ex uh, executive uh, government. So unfortunately, it reports to the cabinet of ministries and executive um, a body and the president. Um, this has to be changed and change the constitution. Some decorative changes on this uh, law and regulator is not going to be helpful as far as I see it. 
And as for the further development and integration of Ukraine to markets of European Union, talking about opportunities from this uh, cooperation of Ukrainian, Polish experience and business, I see a very big potential in Ukraine of building new uh, cap capabilities capabilities uh, for generation of renewable sources of energy as well, using renewable sources of energy. And as far as for me, we have all the legislative framework in Ukraine. And also here, I can even say that Poland can learn a little bit from Ukraine about simplifying those procedures. I had experience on uh, implementation of projects with renewable sources of energy in Poland. Not everything is as optimal in Poland. Maybe some procedures they require working with. For example, in Poland, there's uh, quite a big problem as for joining the networks. All the developers, they point this out. In Ukraine, we also have it quite hard. But we have a we see the dialogue between the operator of the transmission system and operator of the distribution networks, and hence this process is happening in Ukraine. Well, I can say it's more simpler, and maybe in some areas even more transparent. Well, this is my personal opinion. Second direction that we need to develop, as our government says, this is building the interconnectors. And in order to increase the opportunities for export import of electric energy. And uh, uh, some numbers were mentioned um, to get it to the point of seven um, gigawatts. And uh, in reality, it's only probably possible to do two. And of course, it requires efforts and investment. And I had a, actually a client I talked to who was ready to put in his, uh, his uh, funds as well. And also some, uh, some colleagues mentioned that they want to build some interconnectors as well. And this is also an opportunity for Ukrainian and Polish cooperation to accelerate the process because as Mr. Lukas mentioned, we need to create an environment where the money can go in, but not only the governmental funds, but private funds as well. And But this will require some work from the point of view of uh, Polish and Ukrainian legislation and EU legislation as well, because this process is not regulated. There are some gaps in this. And another thing that I would like to see, there is an interesting option for cooperation, and also this should not be put away by the way, Polish uh, speakers, they mentioned uh, some problems with uh, building some uh, some uh, projects, uh, some requirements for uh, some uh, environmental requirements were simplified a little on building an age. Uh, they uh, change to 700 and they will probably do for 500 for wind power stations but the development of uh, wind power stations in Poland can take longer as a decision and I have clients that look at these options uh, for example building a power station on the border between the countries uh, and joining the Polish system in order to help for the Polish system to use directly the energy. Some Polish companies I see already started developing projects in Ukraine for renewable sources of energy. They are also looking into uh, projects uh, with uh, biomethane. And also we can learn from Poland how to build power uh, power stations and offshore power stations as well. What we have that Poland doesn't have, the experience on how to build and connect biomethane systems. So here, Ukraine is a little uh, 
before Poland and uh, Poland is a little behind in this area so we can also share experience and I also think that the exchange of resources and specialists maybe from Ukraine to Poland and so on in order to exchange experience. As for improving the legislation, yes, we have quite a lot of inconsistencies with uh, EU uh, a key and we are working and step by step we're implementing the changes and in certain aspects we are even we are even uh, before some European countries because we also have uh, we work with the secretariat of uh, EU that take care of us implementing things correctly. Some regulations on clean energy package, the fourth package, have already been implemented in Ukraine. For example, I took part in developing uh, regulations on operators, and not all of them are even implemented in, U in Europe, but for us, as for the directive of the fourth energy package, have been implemented already. So, just to summarize uh, this, my vision, it's possible to cooperate. First of all, Polish companies, they can develop uh, projects of renewable energy in Ukraine, invest, and there are already companies like this, share experience that, it, that we have in Ukraine and in Poland, take part in building and reconstruction of electric uh, grids and gas uh, networks uh, as well. There's a need, we have opportunities for that. And Ukrainian companies also can do something similar, but I think it would be mostly the need from the Polish companies and Polish business to enter uh, Ukraine and help with this transformation, green tra transformation and reconstruction because it's interconnected. Thank you. You've said quite a lot about the opportunities for cooperation of Ukrainian-Polish companies. And in regard to this, a question to Mr. Stanchuk. What are the perspectives of cooperation between Polish and Ukrainian energy companies and uh, this uh, two-way cooperation between Ukraine and Poland on EU level? And what should governments of Poland and Ukraine do in order to optimize this cooperation and limit any conflicts that might happen on economic level? That's a very, uh, that's a very important question. My answer is going to be the following. This cooperation already exists. And I think the task um, for Ukrainian and Polish side is to remove the barriers that uh, that are there and uh, that are also connected to some procedures or processes that we have already mentioned. For example, biomethan. Now there's war in Ukraine, unfortunately. And we cannot, for example, export gas from Ukraine to other countries, but this is not about biomethane, hence we can uh, export it to Poland, and these are the procedures that are connected to a transfer, that someone has to be on the border uh, in order to differentiate one methane from another one. It has, can be quite hard. Uh, and these procedures have to be regulated somehow. Unfortunately, there's no good examples if we talk about uh, European Union. Uh, European Union, from this point of view, we can say they're not there yet. But maybe Poland and Ukraine would become an example for other countries. Uh, in this become a model for this uh, way of cooperation and we also have to say that for many years poland has been using ukrainian gas and there was a big transfer 
to Poland, from Ukraine. And LG, this is a chance for Ukraine uh, in order to meet all the requirements. They had to remove the... So we would have to build the Polish system. And to finalize the process of this building the system, it is uh, an undergoing process, but not fully completed. And uh, this would allow our cooperation between Ukraine and Poland to strengthen and go deeper. If we're talking about gas, natural gas, of course, this is something that uh, we are talking about. Of course, the biomethane sh share will be increasing, but who knows? Maybe at some point, gas is going to be completely uh, replaced by bio biomethane at some point. But we need to remember that uh, Ukraine has something that Poland doesn't have, big storage that can be used for accumulating that energy and storing that energy or bioenergy or some other energy. And this has to be balanced in order to balance the energy market. And I think that the system exists. And we remember that the climate has changed. And this also has to be taken into consideration. Thank you very much. I would like to say that our discussion is so interesting that the time time has passed so quickly and to, to conclude for Mr. Volodymyr Machnikov similar question from the point of view of Ukraine how can this Ukrainian Polish cooperation and cooperation between entrepreneurs from Poland and Ukraine look like so they are also partners in this cooperation thank you for the question Mm, and many of my colleagues have already answered to this uh, question in quite a good manner. But what can I add that really, as far as I know, Poland tries to plan and to build new nuclear station. And I think that in this case, Ukraine has quite a lot of experience, a lot of experience that we can share. I think this is an important area of development. And Indeed, this uh, joint uh, development of uh, elect electric uh, networks and uh, gas networks, there's no questions, of course. But I also would like to add that we have to jointly develop pilot projects as well in the uh, innovation spheres innovative technology, maybe creating some common consortiums in order to take part in some in some uh, uh, competition in European projects, for example, uh, projects uh, that are connected to um, to green hydrogen and hydrogen projects. So I think if we put our efforts together, I think that we will be more successful and have more chances to win those hydrogen projects and some other projects on storage, uh, energy storage that are also important and they are they're also connected to some other innovative uh, things, for example, biomethane and also some uh, projects um, uh, that are connected to... Uh, um, gas production because we have quite a lot of experience and has even we even have some experience in cooperating with Poland in this. I would like to point out a company in Poland that at some point it's Kubhas that really developed a big gas production project. I think we can also cooperate here together because Ukraine has top two storage of natural gas in Europe, and I think that together with Polish companies, we can go into this development together, our common development. And here, I think we should not fear competition because competition is the drive of the progress. And we should not separate each other from competition. This is a wrong path. 
and I think the path that was uh, was uh, selected by Polish agrarians, we people that work with an energy area, we should not follow the same path. We need to show the example that we don't fear competition. We can work together in many industries and show this example to other industries, including agrarian, to show that there is no need to fear competition. Thank you. Thank you very much for this amazing answer. So our time has went out so quickly. And of course, all points of view are very interesting. I would like to say thank you to all of our speakers, all of our participants, everyone who joined us today. I would like to say thank you all. We almost had 127 participants. And uh, we see that energy is a topic that is very important for development of both countries. And there are a lot of areas of our cooperation before us. And I think that we will continue these uh, meetings. We already exchanged some contacts in the chat. So we count on this joint projects to be emerging. And I also would like to say thank you to the organizations that helped us to organize this meeting today. And the result of our today's meeting will also uh, be such a report uh, on energy system of Ukraine and energy market in Ukraine, and also preparation of Ukraine for joining EU in energy sector. And also using the opportunity, I would like to invite you to our next seminars that are going to be also dedicated to other areas. Uh, and we will be sending invitations to you. Thank you for your attention and till the next time. Thank you, Slava.